So today is lecture number four. Uh, so the New York Ocean Parks rel Relevance Series is separated into multiple parts. So now is the start of part two, uh, which is titled Ocean Church and Substantive Plan. And today we're going to be talking about section one, what is Ocean Church and why train on the ocean to begin with. So to begin, uh, we'll start with a quote. So your father says that the most precious, precious and important work uh, in his life is to feed people. In his autobiography, your father says, my mother would always prepare food for the passerby who came from all parts of Korea. If a beggar came to our home asking for food and my mother didn't react quickly enough, my grandfather would pick up his meal and take it to the beggar. Perhaps because I was born into such a family, I too have spent much of my life feeding people. And to me, giving people food is the most precious work. So your father has said that the work of giving people food is the most precious work to him. So this work is in fact the work to revolve, resolve the uh, world hunger problem. Ocean problems, right? Ocean problems. It's all about solving hunger. It's all about giving that food to the people who actually need it. So in part two, we will be we will be discussing the actual plan that is the ocean problems. So this is just a review of what we, what we have been talking about for the past uh, couple sessions. So first, you know, we cannot make appropriate decisions and actions without first understanding true parents' purpose, plan, and the current situation. The purpose of ocean problems becomes crystal clear once we come to know the motivation and the heart of true parents and through understanding the reality of the hunger problem, right? So the plan that is ocean problems can be understood by analyzing true father's words and actions and what he invested in during his lifetime. So the current situation can be understood by knowing and analyzing the history and how far the plan has come and where it has failed. So these are the things, the purpose, plan, current situation, and action are the things that we need to understand uh, in order to actually, you know, come up with a you know, plan of action for that. So only then it becomes clear for the first uh, time what we uh, as individuals must do now. So as an introduction to part two, section one, ocean church and ocean training, right? In part one, introduction to ocean provenance, right? We discussed true parents and ocean provenance's purpose, the parents heart and the issues of the world, such as the hunger problem. You know, in the last presentation, especially we focused super heavily extensively on the problem of hunger because of the fact that without knowing the issues of humanity, you know, the issues that are plaguing, you know, the world and the suffering of our brothers and sisters, we cannot fully know and understand the heart of our true parents or truly understand the even the plan to resolve these issues. Now that we have talked about that, though, uh, in this part two, Ocean Church and the Substantive Plan, we will begin to discuss in detail about the 20 year plan that True Father had uh, that can be called the foundation of North American ocean provenance centered on true parents. <clears throat> so today we're going to be. Uh, you know, beginning that. So first, uh, introduction to part two, Ocean Church and Substantive Plan, right? The North American Ocean Providence and Global Ocean Providence began in North America. Uh, and it was, you know, essentially the plan to bring solution to the problem of hunger. And it was to be largely responsible in bringing a substantive, peaceful world where no one starves, right? That was True Father's dream of hope uh, and peace in the world. So the 20 years between 1974 and 1994 was that period to lay that preparatory foundation in North America, uh, you know, this advanced nation that was blessed by God in order to expand that foundation to the rest of the world. What was True Father thinking and what, what exactly was he planning during that 20 year period? And we will be discussing this point. <clears throat> so section one, what is Ocean Church? That's what we're going to be talking about today. You know, why should we train on the ocean? Right. What were True Father's objectives, expectations, you know, what is the theoretical form and role of Ocean Church? You know, what was the form of training that he envisioned through Ocean Training? And then the rest is Section 2, Section 3, and 4, right? History of Ocean Church, uh, the creation of a model of ocean hobby industry base, substantive plan to solve world hunger parts 1 and 2. So that's future presentations. But today we're going to be focusing on Section 1. What is Ocean Church and why should we train on the ocean? So part two in section one, what is Ocean Church? Why train on the ocean? So in this presentation, we will, we will be discussing the following three points. One is what is the background for Ocean Church and what was True Father's expectation? Two, within the Ocean Providence, what was the role of Ocean Church? And three, what is the true aim of ocean training?
so the most important thing, right, to understand, uh, in order to understand, you know, these 20 years of ocean prominence in North America that your father and your mother had invested in heavily, in order to understand those 20 years, we have to understand Ocean Church, which was a very big part of that. So your father has said that the Ocean Church has an ingrained purpose that spans thousands of years. Now, what do you think was the background and true father's expectations for Ocean Church, which he declared in 1980? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today, right now. So this is just a photo from uh, October 1st, 1980, which was the moment that true father in Gloucester Morning Garden had established the first Ocean Church. Now, Ocean Church, uh, True Father said that Ocean Church is a great movement. In God's will in the ocean, he says, in 10 years, you will see why I'm doing this program, why I'm putting so much effort into it, into it now. The Ocean Church movement then, that's what we are talking about today. Is it a good movement? You are shouting that it is a great movement. But why is it a great movement? What we are doing is great. That's true. So why do you think Ocean Church is great? Why do you think True Father uh, stressed the point that, you know, Ocean Church was great? So in order to understand and answer that question, we first need to understand what in the world was Ocean Church exactly, right? Ocean Church is, you know, a very unique movement that sets the boat as a church launched by True Father on Ocean October 1st, 1980, and mobilized a large amount of funds and human resources in the United States. However, later on, it became largely unheard of, right? Uh, if we look at our movement today, especially BC's uh, young second gen and third gen, we kind of don't hear much about ocean church or ocean providence in general especially in foreign countries as well like japan not many people are even aware that ocean church exists right then you know that begs the question was ocean church uh you know providence meant only for north america or is it you know even maybe a failed providence so let's first take a look at the background behind the establishment of the ocean church before answering those questions so first, we have to understand the historical context. So, you know, our church has four, uh, two 40-year courses, right? Uh, the first 40-year course started in 1954 when True Father established the Holy Spirit Association of Unification of World Christianity, where the central responsibility had been True Parents. And in 1971, that's when True Parents began the North American Providence. Uh, three years later, on August 1st, they began the North American Ocean Providence. And then that began the 20 years of North American Ocean Providence all the way until 1994. And in 1980, July 10th, the, you know, True Father developed the One Hope boat, which was, you know, the very famous unsinkable, uh, you know, fishing boat. 1980, uh, same year, October 1st, Ocean Church was finally established in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And the following year, the summer of the following year, Ocean Challenge began. So that, that was basically Ocean Training. And then 1994 came, that was the end of the 20 years of North American Ocean Providence uh, on May 1st, and was also... Oh, sorry. No. May 1st was when FFWPU, Family Federation for World Peace and Unification, was established with central responsibility switched to blessed families. And in 1994, August 1st was the 20th anniversary expo of Ocean Providence in North America, marking, you know, that 20th year of Ocean Providence in America. And then 1995, March 31st was Sao Paulo Declaration, which was the declaration to officially begin the second 40-year uh, course and also the beginning of the North and South American unification movement. So that's a lot, right? But today, specifically, we will be talking about 1980, October 1st, when Ocean Church was established in Gloucester, Massachusetts. So uh, on August, was it August 1st? Yes, sorry. Yeah, on August, uh, October 1st. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, on October 1st, I'm sorry. Yeah, on October 1st, 1980, uh, Ocean, um, when Ocean Church was... Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, sorry. Rewind. <laughs> yeah, so we're not talking about that right now. Uh, right now is going to be talking about August 1st, uh, 1974, when Ocean Providence in North America had begun. And, dur and during that time, dur on that day, True Father had actually made a prayer to God. And during that prayer, he made a promise to God about ocean providence in America. So, see, so he says, you know, explaining about that promise that he made that day, he says, I look at the vast ocean resources as God's blessings 
uh, as God's blessing waiting for the unification church. I have promised to God, give me 20 years time and we will conquer the sea, taking dominion over it and returning the glory to you. That is how I think every time I go out. Later, we will establish a great foundation and even the Ford or Rockefeller foundations will look like peanuts in comparison. That is the way we must realistically feel. So on August 1st, you know, 1974, your father had promised to God that he would create an oceanic foundation in the next 20 years and begin the North American Ocean Providence. So that was how he began the Ocean Providence in North America. Now, from there, there was a 20-year plan for the preparation to solve world hunger, right? Ocean Providence is to solve world hunger. So the next 20 years, your father had a plan to do that. So your father says every year, 20 million people die of starvation. That is 60,000 people a day. Is the president of the United States going to take responsibility for that? Will Gorbachev of the Soviet Union take responsibility? Who will take responsibility for this? Who in the world is going to do that? The true parents and the siblings of the true parents have to take responsibility for it. For this reason, all our work with the sea is something I've been planning and preparing for over the last 20 years. So he basically prepared for 20 years in North America in order to resolve the global hunger problem. So he was setting this foundation in order to actually achieve that goal. So in summary, right, Ocean Church's background is one. Uh, from 1974, 1994, uh, True Parents carried out the 20-year plan of Ocean Providence in North America. And in 1980, after the boat manufacturing began, Ocean Church had been established. And Ocean Training uh, began in 1981 using and centered on those boats. The main purpose of the 20-year North American Ocean Providence was to prepare for the resolution of the global hunger problem. So the Ocean Church was basically established as a very important part of the 20-year North American Ocean Providence that aimed to solve the world hunger, that aimed to set that foundation to solve that problem. So with this background in mind, we will now take a look at what kind of expectations a uh, true father had for Ocean Church. So Ocean Church, you know, true father says that Ocean Church was an important part of the North American providence. He says, I have a vision for America and Ocean Church plays an integral and important part in that. It's a very short quote, but it's very important, right? He basically says that Ocean Church was an important and integral part that cannot be ignored of North of the North American providence. He also says that in the future, Ocean Church would be the only hope for the unification movement. He says, just put my ideas into action and you will find the success I'm talking about. The only hope that Unification Church has for the future lies in the ocean. Don't you see how serious your position is? So, you know, he had very high expectations for Ocean Church, right? And he also said, so not only did he say that it's integral and, you know, it can't be ignored, uh, it's also, you know, so important to the point that he called Ocean Church the only hope that Unification Church has for the future. So that's a really big deal, right? He also says that from the era of land-based church, we would enter a new era where Ocean Church would be the main. He says, I feel in the future the Ocean Church Foundation can be greater than the land church. So far, we've been living in the land church era, but from now on, we'll be living in the Ocean Church era. So he said basically that right now is no longer this era of conventional land-based church, but is now the new is a new era of a new type of church, which is the Ocean Church. So he basically said Ocean Church is integral, uh, Ocean Church is the only hope for the future, and it's also going to be the main uh, the main type of church for this new era. He also said that the Ocean Church Foundation will grow larger than the land-based church. You know, he says, if you, if you knew Ocean Church leaders do well, you will develop faster than the inland churches, including the state centers on those coastal lines. I believe that Ocean Church will succeed more than the IOWC and state centers. Why? Because the work you do with your boats will quickly gain recognition by the city. So True Father had this expectation, right, uh, that Ocean Church and its foundation would be much larger than the re regular churches uh, that we have uh, on land. He also had this expectation that Ocean Church would continuously expand, right? Originally, True Father 
uh, ordered that 30 ocean churches be established. But eventually, you know, he wanted 300, he wanted 535. And eventually, he probably wanted more too. Right? And God's will in the ocean, he says, if you really implement this plan, don't you think Unification Church will grow? We will have 300 churches very soon from the original 30 centers. Our, our members do not like Ocean Church. If I tell them to get into the marine products industry, they all run away. That is why my plan now is to quickly establish a thousand uh, Japanese restaurants across America. That is my plan now. Then my next plan is to establish 535 ocean churches. We must now make preparations for these two plans. So it seemed, you know, that True Father had expected uh, to eventually, you know, expand Ocean Church from 30 to 300 and then over four, uh, over 500 locations. So that kind of begs the question, right? If Trafalgar wanted Ocean Church to expand so much, right, in just America, then was Ocean Church just meant for North America? Was it meant to just expand in North America or was it meant to go beyond? Well, Trafalgar says, we are in an emergency all over the world, so I cannot waste one minute. When we first started to build these boats, we knew nothing about it, but we created an absolute miracle. Master Marines started from scratch. Members came from all over the world to work on these boats. Why? I wanted Ocean Church to go to the entire world. Therefore, once a member is successful here, he can go to the rest of the world. So what your father had in mind was not for Ocean Church to just con be contained in North America, but he also wanted Ocean Church, once successful in North America, for it to expand into the rest of the world. And it was also, you know, so basically, in summary, Ocean Church was meant to start in North America and then eventually expand globally throughout the rest of the world. Which your father says we can begin an American organization, but then eventually cover the whole world, sharing with fishermen everywhere. If we accomplish Ocean Church in America, it is no problem anywhere else in the world. However, first things first, we have to make the foundation here. Surely, we must go everywhere in the world. After all, almost every country has a coastline. So Ocean Church was meant to gain success in the uh, United States, in North America first, and then expand globally. So in summary, what were True Father's expectations for Ocean Church? Well, first of all, uh, the, ocean, the era of Ocean Church will come. And during that era, you know, the Ocean Church will gain a larger foundation than the land-based church. Two, Ocean Church had an integral importance, right? It could not be, be ignored inside the North American providence. Three, he also said that the only hope for the future of our movement was Ocean Church. Four, he wanted to establish over 500 churches, Ocean Churches across North America. But not only that, he also wanted to expand the, these Ocean Churches throughout the world globally, only starting from North America, setting that foundation in North America, and then expanding to the rest of the world. So Ocean Church, you know, in one sentence, was basically an integral, important part of the United States providence and an only hope as well as a form of church that was to be expanded globally. So in this way, you know, Ocean Church was something that True Father had tremendous expectation in. However, we do not hear about it too much within our movement today, right? You know, we we see these these grand expectations that True Father had, and you know, it's kind of huge, right? Uh, according to his words. However, we still, you know, the fact of the matter is that we don't actually hear too much about Ocean Church today. So we will be discussing the detailed history of how that came to be. Uh, but first, you know, I want to ask, you know, do you think Ocean Church was just a temporary providence, which was specific to just that time period back in the past? You know, was it only limited to then? Right? Was Ocean Church a providence specific to just that time period? Well, Father answers that question very clearly, right? He says, Ocean Church is not a random whim. Everything that I had, I do has a purpose which covers thousands of years. When Alan Hokuson uh, gets in the new hope and drives, he has a purpose. But when I take the new hope out, my purpose is much wider and greater. So True Father said that the Ocean Church has a purpose which covers thousands of years. So that means that the purpose of Ocean Church was not just temporary. It wasn't just something meant for like, the 1980s, it was meant uh, to, you know, be completed, even if it takes thousands of years, even if it takes generations to complete. That's how grand the purpose was. It wasn't uh, temporary. 
So what is this grand purpose of Ocean Church that actually covers those thousands of years, those generations, right? Well, number one, uh, right, it's to unify the world through the ocean and to establish a substantive kingdom of heaven on earth. Ocean providence is a method of unifying the world. And True Father has, you know, s- said this multiply, multiple times on multiple occasions, right? He says, I'm going to nurture the ocean in accordance with the original intention of the creator and make it the center stage for bringing the world together. We have to make this foundation on the ocean for the entire world. This is the fastest way to bring people and nations together. So one purpose that True Father wanted to utilize Ocean Church for was to bring the world together, was to bring people and nations together. Now, the purpose that covers thousands of years, right, can also be viewed from a different perspective. It could also mean, you know, restoring the third blessing dominion over all things by restoring the hobby lifestyle that god intended for us before the fall right when you say ocean training ocean church many people actually correlate it with the third blessing because ocean is such a large part of creation and the thing is it's true right Uh, thousands of years refers to the providential history and to the goal of ending thousands of years of fallen history to return to that original world where you know we have dominion over creation over god's creation True Father says, a life of leisure, he's talking about hobby lifestyle, this original lifestyle. He says, a life of leisure, this is the kind of life that God likes. Your hobbies are connected to the creation. So many different hobbies are waiting for me. I never get exhausted. By enjoying one hobby after another, I automatically come closer to God's world. This is the best life that men can hope for. So essentially, the training at Ocean Church was basically this path to gaining dominion over creation. Right? As you know, only one third of the surface of the globe is land, True Father says. Two thirds are ocean. Therefore, without knowing the ocean, we can never have dominion over the entire globe. Right? If you know the the whole earth is like made of water, if of the ocean, if we don't care for the ocean, if we don't love the ocean, if we don't take care of the ocean, if we don't know the ocean then we can't say that we actually fulfilled the third blessing. True Father continues to say, so every one of you, every member of the Unification Church, is required to take a basic training in Ocean Church, including navigation, repairing, and so forth. In order for us to mold our God-centered character, we must know how to deal with the ocean, how to become subject over it, and how to have dominion over God-given creation. So Ocean Providence basically restores that hobby lifestyle intended before the fall, where we are you know, like in the Garden of Eden, right, uh, we're, we would basically be like Adam and Eve, right? They're living in harmony with creation, right? They love creation, they have fun with creation, you know, they take care of creation, and t- creation naturally takes care of them. It nourishes them, it gives them food, gives them water, it gives them joy, gives them beauty, right? So this is the kind of, you know, hobby lifestyle of joy, uh, this third blessing, dominion over creation that we were meant to have before the fall. However, because of the fall, you know, God tells Adam in Genesis 3.17, because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. So basically, what does that mean? Well, it means that the fall, you know, has caused uh, human beings to begin to suffer from environmental and food issues. After the fall, you know, cursed is the ground because of you. That means we have environmental problems, right? And also through painful toil, you will eat, right? We have food problems, right? Human beings now live this slave lifestyle rather than a hobby lifestyle where we basically have to work day and night, uh, giving up our passions, giving up, you know, our hobbies in order to just get food on the table to survive, right? Through painful toil, right? So what Ocean Province was basically... uh so ocean promise is basically this way, this path to restore humanity to the intended lifestyle back uh, before the fall. So it was meant to resolve those environmental problems and resolve those that food problem so that we can, uh, you know, regain that dominion over creation and live in harmony with creation and, you know, really live that hobby lifestyle. So that's the purpose that covers thousands of years. And it's the reason that your father established the ocean church. Now, note, you know, we keep saying hobby lifestyle, right? But this doesn't mean that we can just live, you know, enjoying, you know, just hobbies, right? Just hobbies throughout our life. You know, for those of us who have been taught 
that there will be no liberation of humankind without sacrifice, hardships, indemnity, right? When we talk about hobby lifestyle, it seems really foreign, right? We always talk about we have to sacrifice, you know, the things that we love. We have to sacrifice the things that we enjoy in order to do something for the sake of the world, right? Uh, but one thing to know is that this hobby lifestyle is connected. Uh, a true hobby lifestyle is connected to the productivity uh, that is for the world and for others, right? Uh, a true hobby, a God-centered hobby, you know, gives to the world. It gives to other people. You know, it creates something. It adds something it adds something to the life around me, around you, right? It doesn't take away. So it means that we live with joy for others and improve productivity. So we'll be discussing this point about hobby lifestyle and the relationship uh, of it with, you know, interdependence, mutual prosperity, uh, universal values in a future section titled Ocean Hobby Tourism Industry. So if you want to learn more about that, uh, this concept of hobby lifestyle, please come back for more uh, sessions. But yeah, so True Father says, you know, about hobby lifestyle, uh, I mean, not hobby lifestyle, but, you know, kind of about hobby. He says, I had to learn it from scratch. You know, I kept on working day after day and established the tradition. Now I am known as an expert among the other tuna fishermen. I've developed the plan, putting in seven or eight seasons faithfully until I learned how to catch tuna. Such a thing cannot be accomplished as a hobby or by someone who just enjoys the ocean. So your father didn't just go out to the ocean just as a hobby. He didn't go out just, you know, just to please himself, right? He did it for the sake of the world. And he still, you know, uh, you know, he continued going out uh, for the sake of the world rather than just for his own joy. So that's the background and the expectation be uh, behind Ocean Church. So let's summarize all of this, right? As we can see from True Father's words, one, Ocean Church is an absolutely integral part of the plan to resolve the problem of world hunger. Two, True Father hoped to expand it to the rest of the world, not just contain it in America. And three, and its activities uh, are connected to a purpose that covers thousands of years to return this world to the intended original world before the fall. So as a method to substantively restore the world to this original state, True Father called Ocean Church integral and important and the only hope for the future of our movement. So next, uh, you know, so we, we can see that Ocean Church had really great importance within the ocean prominence. So now we're going to be talking about the role of ocean church within ocean providence. So your father talks a lot about fishing, witnessing, and youth training all happening on the boat, centered on the boat. So your father says, uh, you are taking care of a boat. Go out and catch fish. Use the boat for evangelical programs and train the youth of the city. The boat can supply you with all you need. So Ocean Church was basically a movement uh, with activity centered on boats, right? Where on those boats, with those boats, we can catch fish, conduct economic activities, witness, and train the youth all at the same time with just that boat. So True Father instructed Ocean Church to, you know, conduct all these things, you know, event evangelical activities and training similar to ordinary land churches. But what was the difference? What made Ocean Church special, uh, you know, other than the fact that there were boats? Well, uh, True Father says that boat, uh, the work that we do on boats will be quickly recognized by society. But why does he say that? He says, I believe that Ocean Church will succeed more than the IOWC and state centers. Why? Because the work you do with your boats will quickly gain recognition by the city. Someday you may even become the mayor of your city. The people will elect you based on your contribution to cleaning up their city. Some of you might even become congressmen or senators. So he's, you know, saying that the work that we do with our boats will quickly be recognized by towns, right? He's even saying that, you know, we might even become the mayor of the city because of the recognition, right? Uh, because of those contributions. But what kind of work, what kind of contributions exactly was True Father talking about that, that can be made through the boat? Well, one, one aspect is to revitalize port town fisheries through boats. True Father says, America is surrounded by the sea but has not conquered it. I initiated our fishing business, business to revitalize American fishing and sea ports. So one of the first things that Ocean Church was supposed to do is to revitalize uh, the fishing and sea ports. 
He also wanted us through the boats to educate the youth, uh, the young generation who are losing hope. Right? He says, I designed the One Hope boat. It is a strong and yet fast boat, and I know that young people will be easily attracted to it. It was designed with young people in mind. I wanted them to use the boat and do things together with you. In the ocean cities, the young people have no hope. They don't have anything to do and just hang around in the streets. They're open to being contaminated by the drug traffic. They have no equipment to go out fishing, and even if they caught fish, they wouldn't know what to do with them. They have no way to gain pride in themselves or self-respect. So True Father was basically wanting to, with the boats, uh, help these young people who are aimless, who don't have direction, right? So he also wanted to develop cities. He wanted to clean the city up and also solve this uh, drug problem, these different issues in society in these different local cities. He says, I studied the ocean-related cities and recognized that the best way to help America is to help these ocean-related cities. So much comes through these cities and then filters into the, into the country. If we develop these cities and clean them up, we will set the direction for this nation for the next century. The Coast Guard is very important in this regard. They are trying to safeguard the country against the infiltration of drugs, but the mafia is bringing in cocaine and other drugs by the thousands of pounds. If we are to enter into the ocean way of life, we have to cooperate and help the Coast Guard with its work. In that way, we can help this nation clean up its drug problem, and at the same time, we can even help the American fishing industry. So, you know, many things uh, come into America through the port cities, right? So Trafalgar is basically saying if we can clean up the port cities, if we can filter out the bad things in the port cities, then we're basically helping the rest of America, right? And the Coast Guard, which is very important for that, you know, we are able, uh, if we are able to create that relationship and help the Coast Guard, uh, we'd be able to help, you know, and really contribute to cleaning up the drug problem uh, and help the American fishing industry. So basically, you know, all, all this work with the boat that your father wanted us, wanted us to do was basically social contributions to the local cities. So which is basically the epitome of living for the sake of others. Right? Your father says that this work through the boats can be recognized quickly by the town and Ocean Church will succeed more than other churches. So these social contributions, right? As discussed before, Ocean Church must engage in evangelical education, just as the land-based church. But on top of that, it is meant for the following types of social contributions in coastal towns and cities, right? We are to revitalize fishery and ports, uh, educate the youth who has lost the hope, lost hope, uh, help the Coast Guard and solve the drug problem, and also develop the cities and to clean them up. So working on the boats, you know, these contributions that we can uh, make through the boats uh, can really help society. And your father said that the work you do will quickly gain recognition from the town and that Ocean Church will succeed more than other churches. So the main function of Ocean Church then is to live for the sake of the town and the city. It can be summarized as follows, right? So there's social contribution and the, there's two types of contribution. There's traditional evangelical activities like outreach and ideological education. And there's also practical activities like business and ocean training. So unlike conventional churches, right? Ocean Church based, uh, Ocean Church not only does, you know, outreach and ideological education, those traditional evangel evangelical activities, but it also creates economy based on businesses. In addition, it was True Father's vision to promote our outreach efforts through helping American cities. So by connecting the business activities and educational activities to these social contributions. Uh, so along with that, you know, along with the business side, there's also ocean training, you know, training the youth on the ocean through fishing, right? So let's take a look at actually the ocean training, right? The purpose and the function of ocean training. So Trafalgar said that, you know, in order to train human resources for, uh, oh, so Trafalgar basically, uh, you know, one of the reasons and the purpose uh, as to why he was training people wasn't just, you know, to teach people how to fish, right, uh, or to just like enjoy fishing, right, but it was also to really essentially train human resources for the fishery business and ocean hobby tourism business, people who can actually carry these businesses out. Strother says, I created something that did not exist in the United States by sending out people to pioneer ocean church. I created ocean churches in 30 of the most important seacoast locations in America. We can pursue seafood businesses, but we can also enter the charter boat fishing business. 
This is the foundation for the global recreational fishing business I will create in the future. I trained people and built Ocean Church as an enterprise that gives tours to people who enjoy fishing as a hobby. So Ocean Church was basically meant to be a place where Trufala wanted to train personnel for the fishery businesses and the ocean hobby tourism businesses. So people who can actually inherit and you know carry out the businesses, who can actually continue the businesses, because without people, a business can't run, right? So True Father was training the people who can run these businesses. So in order to build a vast economic base for the unification movement uh, was also one of the reasons, right? So True Father also wanted uh, to train people uh, to take on these businesses. And he wanted people to take on those businesses in order to build a vast economic base. He says, the marine products industry in America has reached the stage where it cannot survive without us. A vast and infinite store of resources is calling us. That is why we will use it as our economic base in our global efforts. It is in this area of marine industry that we will final, find the global economic base that will decide whether we will thrive or collapse in the future. That is how I see it. So your father is basically saying that if we cannot find uh, a global economic base, you know, uh, a base where, you know, a source of funds, a source of money that can help us actually do God's will on a global scale, then we will not be able to thrive as a unification movement who's actually working for peace and uni unity. He says, I am leaving again today for Boston, and again, I have an important mission. I will go out to sea not for pleasure, but to lay a foundation for the future economy of the unification church. That's my goal. There's no way we can exceed the advances in industry and technology except in the one virtually untapped area of the CNC products. So he also mentions the fact that, uh, you know, in order for us to actually gain that economic base, economic foundation, we need to be invested in the marine industry because he saw a future for the marine industry. He says a large part of the economy in the future will come from the ocean. Whoever attains a leading position in the hobby industry will have a profound impact on the world. This person will be highly influential. Thus, for several decades, we have been preparing all of this for humankind. So do you understand what I mean by hobby industry? I believe that by be that being the first to make such a worldwide organization is the shortcut in leading uh, to peace in all fields, including the world's money, market, and human resources. So he saw so if you actually take a look at today's economy, a large part, uh, one of the a lot, a large uh, leading industry is actually the marine industry, and another really le uh, big industry in today's world is also the leisure industry, the recreational industry, basically the hobby industry. So your father saw the future of these uh, different industries that he saw was going to be successful in the future. So he wanted us to invest in those, and eventually create, essentially create that vast economic base and foundation centered on the marine hobby industry. So as you've read from True Father's words, right, the fishery industry, hobby tourism industry, you know, they were meant to be the economic foundation of the unification movement. And solving hunger, you know, that's our goal, right? Uh, especially for Ocean Providence. It's something also that the UN, the United Nations, and many nonprofit organizations throughout the world have failed to solve so far. However, these organizations have a lot of money, but they're still unable to solve these issues. So that definitely means that you know, us too, we need that huge economic foundation if we can, if we even hope to solve this issue. So to that end, True Father's expectation was for us to build a global economic organization through fishery business and hobby tourism industry to help us actually resolve that hunger problem. So in summary, uh, right, the main role for Ocean Church and training uh, is to develop the human resources for businesses. Ocean Church is a place to train personnel for the fisheries, fisheries business and the ocean hobby tourism industry. Centered on marine resources, the fisheries business, uh, businesses and the ocean hobby tourism industry would serve as a major economic base for the unification movement. And on top of that, the plan was to solve the world's food problems through that economic base. So basically, uh, Ocean Church was a place for training, ocean training, uh, and through training people, we, we would create people and personnel who could carry on fishery businesses and ocean hobby tourism business. And through that, we would be able to manage ocean resources and establish a global economic base. 
And through all of that, we will be able to solve world hunger. And by solving world hunger, we basically produce results that will be recognized by the world as, uh, you know, as true parents being the ones to solve world hunger. So in that, se in that sense, we're able to, you know, practice practice the world by practically living for the sake of others, for the sake of the world, uh, and, you know, achieve interdependent, interdependence, mutual prosperity, universally sh shared values, and also, you know, create this global level witnessing where we can testify to true parents through, you know, this global level result of solving world hunger. And through all of that, we will be able to essentially create a unified, peaceful world where we have dominion over creation. True Father says true peace will not come as long as humanity does not solve the problem of hunger. And once we are able to do so, uh, then we can create that unified, peaceful world. So that's basically the vision that True Father had for Ocean Church and Ocean Training within Ocean Church. He wanted all of this to happen uh, once we get that done. So how, uh, so you know, Ocean Church, Ocean Providence was basically the way to contribute to society uh, live for the sake of others at the local and the global level. So Ocean Church was basically, you know, a method to contribute uh, to local city and town level, right? Solving local social problems. And Ocean Providence as a whole uh, was the method to solve, uh, to give social contribution to the nation and to the world on this global level and solve world hunger, poverty, all these different global level issues. So Ocean Providence was that method to practically live for the sake of others. And unity can be achieved once we are able to actually live for the sake of others. So True Father says, the more we live for the sake of others, the closer we, become, we come to the position of the central figure. Since God is like that, he establishes the person who lives in such a way as the central figure. Furthermore, only by living in such a way can ideal and complete unity be accomplished. So, yeah, so here's a summary of basically the theoretical functions and the roles of Ocean Church. So far, we've discussed, one, that Ocean Church is a church that integrates the, these three functions, social contributions, business, and mission. Then we can also see that Ocean Training conducted at Ocean Church had a clear purpose of developing human resources for the fisheries and the ocean hobby tourism businesses to carry them out. So above, you know, so these things that we talked about are the actual concept and the actual plans that True Father designed for Ocean Church. It's the ideal, it's the idea uh, that True Father had in mind. Later on, we will dive further into what the actual Ocean Church, uh, you know, ended up becoming. Did it actually achieve this ideal that True Father had in mind, right? Uh, and that's going to be in the next episode. But for now, let's uh, discuss the true concept behind Ocean Training con conducted at Ocean Church. So we discussed the purpose. Now we're going to be discussing, you know, what kind of human resource development did Ocean Training actually aim for? What kind of people did your father want to produce through Ocean Training? So your father says, with the teachings of the Unification Church in the Ocean Providence, our church members are making comprehensive preparations to solve the world's food shortage. With this, the entire world can find hope. What does that mean? Uh, well, we discussed earlier that Ocean Church is meant to be a place to develop human resources for the fisheries and ocean hobby tourism businesses. Uh, the fact is, though, that no matter how much anyone develops businesses, without the right ideology, resolution to world hunger will not happen. So if you think about it, right, there's the United Nations, right? It's a very big, uh, big thing, big organization. It's connected to different businesses, has a lot of money, it has a lot of people involved. However, they don't have the right ideology of li living for the sake of others. Each nation involved in the United Nations essentially puts their own nation before other nations, which is why United Nations is not able to actually resolve the hunger problem. So world hunger cannot be solved unless there's an actual correct ideology. And that ideology, the true father wanted to cultivate that ideology uh, with, along with the different certain characteristics within people who are trained within Ocean Church. So True Father, so what kind of characteristics and what exactly is the ideology that True Father hoped to cult cultivate? Well, Ocean Church members, uh, you know, we were meant to pioneer the new ocean era. So True Father says, now we are to begin our training and this is a new era for the ocean. A new age is beginning. This is a truly historical happening in which you are now participating. They will come here to this very port of Gloucester, to this very house in Gloucester, where you are able to hear from me personally about the meaning of this training program. You, 
the class of 1984, just 76 members, will be considered the pilgrim fathers of this new age. So ocean tr through ocean training, True Father essentially, the first ocean training, ocean challenge, right? Uh, you know, True Father called them the pilgrim fathers of this new era. And he essentially wanted to cultivate leaders of that era, continuing on from those pilgrim fathers. He says, the ocean has everything to do with the future. Don't you know that? You have to become interested in the ocean or otherwise you will just disappear into history. In the future, the qualification for leadership will be to know about the ocean. The basic knowledge will be how to handle a boat. To know about the ocean and to be able to go upon it will become two basic qualifications for leadership in the future. So basically what True Father is saying is that in order to even become a future leader, the basic qualification is to know about the ocean, is to actually understand what to do on the ocean, and that is how you can become a leader. That's the qualification for becoming a leader. So he was trying to train these kind of people. And he also wanted to educate the leaders of the unification movement through ocean training. Right, True Father says, I designed the basic group for the core of our movement who came through the seminary at Barrytown. After graduation, they should first go to CARP and train on campus. Then automatically, they should come to Ocean Church. That is the plan for educating the leadership of our movement, from UTS to CARP to Ocean Church. After that kind of well-rounded training, the seminarians should go on to state leadership. Every state must have that kind of leader. So basically, True Father set up this basic route for the core of our movement, for the leadership of our movement, right? He wanted people uh, to basically learn the uh, learn ideology uh, at UTS and then go to CARP for training, uh, you know, spreading that ideology, and then eventually to Ocean Church. And then from Ocean Church, they can become the core leaders of the unification movement. So Ocean Church was basically meant to be that final stage for training the leadership of the unification movement. He also wanted to create a special task force. Uh, through ocean training, he wanted to create people that can understand and respond to True Father's instructions quickly, efficiently, and correctly. See, he says, uh, in God's will in the ocean, so far, no matter how clear and creative the directions that he gave were, they have not been digested and accepted. The message dwindled with each step from the leadership to the members until it no longer made sense when it got to the members. However, the leader who moves from Carp to Ocean Church and then to state leadership can understand and respond to my direction. They will be like a special task force ready to respond and go wherever, whenever they hear new directions. So according to Father's words, within the movement at the time, right, it seemed like, you know, when True Father gave instructions and the leadership received those instructions, the leadership were not able to fully understand what True Father meant. So because they didn't fully understand the message, when they passed it on to the members, to the rest of the members, the message dwindled, right? With each step, the message basically didn't have the full uh, meaning that True Father intended for it. So through Ocean Church and through Ocean Training, True Father was basically training members who can actually faithfully and fully understand uh, True, True Father's words uh, and his instructions and that they can actually uh, implement and take action based on those instructions directly. He also, through Ocean Training, wanted to create uh, and form a character centered on God. So in order for us to mold our God-centered character, True Father says, we must know how to deal with the ocean, how to become subject over it, and how to have dominion over God-given creation. So in order to even form a personality centered on God, which we want to do, right? That's the first blessing. We have to know the ocean. That's what True Father said. So essentially, uh, you know, True Father wanted to cultivate people at Ocean Church through ocean training. Right. In this webinar series 1.2, we're basically defining the global leader in this ocean era. And Ocean Church is the very place where these leaders of the new era are to be trained. So they're meant to become the pilgrim fathers of the new era. Right. They're meant to become the future leaders of that era. They're meant to become God centered, uh, meant to have God centered character. You know, become the core members of the movement and become the special task force that can understand, respond, and act efficiently on True Father's instructions. So ocean training essentially, uh, at the most basic basic explanation, is training for the future leaders of the new era. So then what kind of activities should these leaders of the new era uh, trained in ocean church be doing? What should they do? 
Well, they should be someone who can help people starving to death in developing countries. True Father says, you unificationists must fulfill your responsibility to lead them and care for these people. You should go to the developing nations and become instructors and teachers at kindergartens, elementary schools, min- middle schools, high schools, and universities. You should improve standards by teaching them the most modern agricultural methods. This is how you can save people who would otherwise starve to death. They first need to know how to fish e- effectively. So, of course, the leaders cultivated at Ocean Church has to become people who can actually achieve the goal of Ocean Providence, which is to solve the food problems of the world. So that's what they should be able to do, solve the food problems in developing countries. He also wanted to train someone who will devote their lives to the oceanic enterprises. He says, when I came to the United States 20 years ago, I judged that current fishing methods would be out out." Uh, out of date. In the future, the aquaculture industry will flourish instead of chasing fish. I realized that working the sea on a boat will become part of the tourism industry, such as sport fishing, which is like a hobby. In terms of lifestyle, I realized it would be diff- difficult for us to spend our entire lives in the maritime industries without this aspect of hobby. So the leaders of the ocean era are also meant to be those who are willing uh, to spend their lives in the fishery business, or people who consider it as a hobby, people who are doing it joyfully with happiness and willingly. So someone, he also wanted to uh, train someone who will, you know, continue Ocean Providence even beyond their own current generation, someone who will actually pass it on to even their descendants. He says when working in the marine time industry, it is marine industry, it is important to develop human resources who want to spend all of their lives for it and that it is a God-given occupation. The person likes to see in youth, he likes to see in his middle age, and when he is old, he says, oh, I love the sea, and dies. The key challenge is how to develop such human resources and how to instruct and pass that spirit to their descendants. So True Father basically wanted a person, a leader, who would engage in ocean providence and think of it as an important uh, mission that God gave, uh, and also want to, you know, uh, want to connect even their descendants to this mission, to pass that on. Finally, he also, or not finally, but he also wanted to, uh, you know, train someone who would express God's heart by addressing the hunger problem. He says, don't think that going to Africa and working is a pain, but an interesting one. You can enjoy your work and actually do community service work. Imagine that 100 families live in a poverty-stricken village in Africa and that relief supplies are shipped from 100 countries, such as the United States and the United Kingdom. The inhabitants of the land will admire us and say, wow how great the Unification Church is. It's doing what the world's greatest powers in the United States can't do. It's really trying to unite the world. Through your efforts, they will be truly grateful to God. Are you all interested in this job? So leaders trained at Ocean Church uh, are meant, uh, will be able to tackle the food problem, right? And by tackling that food problem, they will be able to witness to masses of people through their actions and testify to God and true parents by solving a practical issue. So in summary, what kind of personnel must Ocean Church cultivate? They must cultivate leaders of the ocean era that know about the ocean. Someone who goes to a developing country and is able to actually improve the living standards there as well as bring solution to the food problem there. Someone who loves the ocean as a hobby and will continue the mission throughout his life, joyful, his or her life joyfully. Uh, someone who considers this responsibility as God-given and will inherit this responsibility to even their descendants and someone who can testify to God through action by resolving the hunger problem. Now, once we understand all of that, now we can begin to visualize exactly what these leaders of the ocean era would look like. They would be missionaries and global leaders with practical skills or expertise in the area of ocean providence and resolving the food problem globally, even in underdeveloped countries. So these people would have skills like agriculture, fish farm, medicine, electrician, construction, and all these different things. So these trained leaders were also meant to globalize this North American Ocean Providence Foundation. So in North America, right, True Father spent those 20 years setting that foundation for Ocean Providence to solve the world hunger. And during those 20 years, he wanted to train people to, uh, and these people who would, who would be trained would become leaders who can make model ocean churches, model fishery businesses, model hobby tourism industry. And by making that model, uh, by becoming, uh, you know, successful in North America, you know, these leaders of the ocean era would go throughout the world, throughout the rest of the world, 
uh, to developing countries uh, and globalize these models to eventually, you know, find the solution uh, to actually solve world hunger and eventually create a unified, peaceful world. So the purpose of establishing a foundation in North America for those 20 years from 1974 to 1994 was for the trained groups of people to globalize that foundation made in North America and solve that global hunger problem. So in summary, uh, what is Ocean Church and why train on the ocean? Well, Ocean Church, which was started in North America as a revolutionary and unique boat-based church that integrated uh, the uh, functions of social contribution, business, and mission. True Father wanted to globalize it, right? In order to ultimately solve global hunger problem, the leaders of the new era trained in Ocean Church on the ocean are meant to globalize the Ocean Church, fishery businesses, and ocean hobby tourism industry all throughout the world to solve world hunger. And in the next episode, we will be taking a much more detailed look at the actual Ocean Church and its history and what actually happened. Uh, etc. So that's the end. Thank you so much for listening. I will pass it back to Minobu-san. You know,